So let's um, continue with our um, accounting. Um, if you remember, when we did the solution for this exercise, I did mention that this is a, an overly simplified example. This is obviously also an oversimplified set of financial statements. And I also mentioned that there is a huge um, step, yes, accounting cycle that was skipped and completed our financial statements. The only reason why we were so um, successful in completing this uh, four financial statements uh, without going through that very long um, procedure is because these examples are extremely and extremely simple. So you can easily make these entries. And again, the purpose of this specific exercise was to make sure that you understand how uh, each of these transactions, how each of these events influences yeah, and has an effect on your financial statement. Now, from now on, we will go through the step or several steps, yeah, multiple steps, a procedure that is in between these two moments. Yeah? So the moment when these transactions has ha have happened and when we have finally made our financial statement. So uh, we will go through those steps, what we call an accounting cycle. So we, here we have our accounting cycle. Yeah, this is our accounting cycle that you can see. Um, now, obviously, it might look very scary when you look at all of these steps, but uh, I'm happy to announce that we have actually learned and we've practiced a lot this first step and the very final step that is actually in here somewhere. Yeah, after the reversing uh, entries, we have our financial statements. Yeah, financial statements. And we have done these two last ones. Yeah? Yeah, we did the very first one and then we did the very last one. Now, identify and analyze transactions is basically when, for example, when we read those lines of um, text with the assignment where it says we buy uh, or bought, yeah, bought um, uh, an equipment, an equipment uh, for five thousand dollars for example this is you identified it yeah so now you have identified this is a transaction this has an effect and you have to record it and then analyze it and by analyze it we talk about that our famous accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity and by looking at these uh, example for example uh, we see that buying an equity uh, equipment for $5,000 means that we have exchanged one asset for another. So we have bought an equipment, yeah, 5000 we bought an equipment uh, recorded under the assets, um, and then we sold, uh, uh, not sold, uh, we spend uh, cash, yeah, so we have reduction in cash. So we, ha we know it already, we've done it several times, multiple times. Uh, so by now you already have the knowledge of this first uh, step. Yeah, so this is an okay, yeah, it's a check step. You already know it, you have done it before. Now the following step is number two, and that's the recording transactions to journals. Uh, now, again, I repeat, until now we have done immediately right so we would identify the assets we would analyze it here and then we immediately we would input it into financial statements but the most of the companies don't have that a uh, little number of transactions and they have multiple number of transactions and doing the way we've done it so far is absolutely not practical. The only purpose we did it was for practice. We've learned how these financial statements are influenced by each line of such type of transactions. Now let's continue with our accounting cycle. Uh, before I uh, explain the second step, I would like to go through our with our examples through the first step, which you already know, and smoothly shift to the second step. Now uh, let's look at our example here, and I'm using the previous um, you know exercise that we had. Uh, and if you remember, the first entry was invested fifty thousand as capital. We identified the transaction. Usually, this is identified using primary documents. We will talk about them as well, as you know, official documents like bills and receipts, and for example, yeah, contracts and so on. Uh, these are the primary documents that eventually become uh, the source of these transactions. Uh, now we have identified our transaction.
subtraction. We know that it will make some kind of effect to our uh, accounting equation, which is assets equal liability plus equity. Again, I'm repeating what we already know. Yeah, we, we are going through it again. Now, invested 50,000 as capital means that we have an effect on our asset side and on our equity side. Yeah, uh, asset side gets increase in 50,000 of cash. Whereas the equity side gets increased in 50,000 uh, in its capital. We know this far. We know that this is how we evaluate uh, the uh, how we analyze our transaction. Now we have to record it. We haven't done this uh, not even once. Yeah. Like I said, we would always jump from the identifying and analyzing transaction to immediately writing them into the financial statements. Now we have to go through the recording process of this, trans this specific transaction. Now, when we record our financial uh, transactions, we can we use accounts. Yeah, the accounts. Account show the increase. Yeah, increase and the decrease to assets, liabilities, and equity type accounts. You know asset type accounts, so we have cash, yeah, so it's, ca oh, sorry, uh, yeah, so cash account, um, these are, now I'm, I'm using them as the names for accounts. We have account called account, uh, account uh, receivable, which is also um, receivable, sorry which is also an asset, we will have an equipment, etc. Now liabilities are uh, accounts payable, payable, um, notes payable, etc. Salary, salary payable and so on. Yeah. And we have equity, which is capital, uh, at the least the smallest example so far. So these are the types of the uh, accounts yeah so types of accounts and these are the names of those accounts now let's continue with explanation let's use a different color uh, now the the second step okay let me use a different color so you will understand so I will use green as the first step and the second step is a purple the second step would be to record these transactions and when we record a transaction into an account account we use debit entry debit entry and credit entry. These are also some things, uh, some, some new terminology that you will have to work with closely for the uh, next few weeks. Uh, debit entry and credit entry. Uh, this is the um, essence of the double entry bookkeeping. So what happens is that we have two accounts involved into this transaction. Each account has two sides, a debit side and a credit side. Every time you have one transaction, one side of that account, so if we have a cash, so let, let's, let me use a um, T account graphical representation, yeah? Uh, yeah, debit side always written on the left side and credit on the right side. Uh, because this, cash is our asset account, it always increases through the debit side, yeah, 50,000. And the second account involved is capital, yeah, I'm not writing anything else, we're talking only about the information given and that is invested 50,000 as capital. We know that cash increases and uh, from the new information that you, we've learned, uh, cash or asset accounts always increase through debit side, whereas equity and liability accounts, they increase through um, the credit side. This is something unquestioned. This is something given. We do not um, argue about it. We do not debate this information. So the fact that, uh, let me just use this color, the fact that we are using, so we use the fact that asset uh, always increases through debit and therefore in decreases through credit account. Uh, equity and liability have a different effect. So they, they decrease through debit, however, they increase through credit. Now, how do we know that we have to increase 
in in the capital side because we have established we've analyzed it on our first step during our first step we have understood that our equation is affected in uh, on asset side as increase in cash and equity side as increase in capital so when we enter our uh, accounting yeah so accounts are recorded we uh, naturally by knowing but by just simply knowing this yeah this is the rule yeah think of it as a golden rule these rules we apply these rules and we know that cash is increased through debit side and capital is increased through credit side now as you can see for each transaction you have one corresponding debit entry so one debit entry and the other is corresponding credit entry always so we will start here it's a uh, uh, you you need to process this and uh, we will continue with a second example so you can pause now you can take a rest and uh, follow up with the uh, example uh, the second example so okay uh, let's look at the second example i hope you have tried to absorb the information from the first example now we're continuing with this example again we identify yeah or, so we go through the first step first step is first step yeah identifying uh, id yeah id the transaction id and analyze analyze uh, our transaction uh, and that is, uh, we have identified it and analyzing is uh, asset equal liability plus equity. Rented a space in local shopping center and paid in advance for two years, 12,000. So the transaction here identified is paid in advance for two years, 12,000. So what happened is that we have a deduction in our reduction in, in cash yeah, of 12,000. An increase in prepaid um, prepaid uh, rent. That's it. Also twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. So when we have to record it again, I'm switching to the purple to identify that this is a second step. Second step is to record these into the appropriate account so here we have account involved cash yeah the account named cash and the other one is called prepaid rent now cash again we can use our typical t account representation cash on the debit side uh, debit side and credit side so what happened is that we had a decrease in cash and if you remember cash is an asset asset decreases to credit side so 12,000 is inputted here and we have a prepaid rent again debit here credit here I'm not writing it um, you just have to commit to memory that the left side is debit the right side is credit prepaid rent is our asset this is something that we've paid for we haven't used it yet it, it, it is in our assets and assets increase through the debit side again we have this uh, very important moment where for this yeah, second transaction there is one transaction only and there is one credit side entry and there is one debit corresponding side entry yeah so the the entry that corresponds to this one is in credit and in debit uh, 